Welcome to Radio Labyrinth. This is season nine, episode seven. Seventh. Can you believe we're already seven weeks into this ridiculous year of 2024? And it's a leap year, so we might get an extra show. There's Olympics. There's the leap year that we already mentioned or that I said. And then there's a presidential election. I can't wait. I can't wait until we just really just consumes our every waking moment. And you can't look anywhere without seeing a political ad. In your mailbox, it's the only time you get mail that isn't a bill. It's just flyer after flyer of who you got to vote for and why. It's going to be it, huge. It, it's going to be huge. I'm going to get them all this year and stack them up. And then I'm going to mail them all back to whoever sent them to him. Here you go, fucker. Let's get ready to bowl. We're talking about bowling. 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 <laughs> We're going bowling? Ah, fuck it, dude. Let's go bowling. We are on for bowling. Bowling. LDI is sponsoring and presenting our event. It's Bowling Baby, Bolero and Lilburn, Saturday, March 9th from 1 to 3 p.m. You get free shoes, soft drinks, and two food items. And uh, it's for up to 23 people. Uh, adults 18 and over only, please. The first 10 people to sign up get in with a friend, you know, plus one. So all you have to do, and, and I'm going to read the email. It'll also be on the screen if you're looking at our YouTube uh, page. It's R-L-E, oh, R-L-E-V-E-N-T-L-D-I at yahoo.com. So R-L-E-V-E-N-T-L-D-I at yahoo.com to get your RSVP. Now that is uh, first come, first serve. And again, that is at Bolero in Lilburn, Saturday, March 9th from 1 to 3 p.m. And uh, we'll have a lot of fun. So uh, let Brett know if you want to go. Uh, the first 10 people. First come, first serve. And we'll have a lot of fun. And we'll bowl. And we'll eat some bowling alley food. The only thing that I don't like about bowling alleys in 2024 is they don't smell like cigarettes. Because you can't smoke in them anymore. But that's okay. That's the old days. We've moved moved on beyond past all of that. Right, ma'am? Yes. Yes, sir. Did don't call quit, Steph, ma'am. Did you quit smoking again? No, I'm quitting on Friday when my uh, 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 <clears throat> when my wife and son return from Tidy Island. So as of viewing this, I will be on the patch again. Got to set those markers, those dates. I, don't I love know. you, Tim. I love you, Tim. But you're a lifer. No, I'm quitting. Fuck it. I my voice sounded you're so a good. Fucking lifer, dude. No, you let are. me tell you why. No, let me tell you why. Because for the the time I wasn't smoking, within three or four days, I was doing impressions and it wasn't hurting my throat. And that, to me, is more important than uh, than smoking. And also, they they went up in price again. So don't call me a lifer. Just offer me support. You're not going to quit Pro drinking. Prove me wrong. You're a lifer. Prove me wrong. Well, okay. Prove me wrong, then. Uh, okay, ma'am. I don't you think you can do it. I don't think you got the guts. I don't think you've got the guts. You don't have the guts. Or don't you have the guts to do what you think is right? Maybe lay off the crack, too. Listen, you have to supplement. When you give up something, you have to find something to replace it. So if it's crack, it's crack. Smoke my pole! <laughs> crack or cock, one of the two. Maybe, why don't you just try shooting something up instead? You know, give your lungs a break. What, you mean like a school? <laughs> Or snorting. You could snort a school, something oh, like that. Oh, you mean shoot a drug. I didn't. Think. Yeah, yeah. Just snort something. You huh? get angry. You get angry when you quit smoking sometimes, but I'm not going to hurt anybody. Come on now. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to bash your brains. I would never do that. Do you think I would shoot somebody like Alec Baldwin? The next thing you know, I'm at a Comic-Con in Atlanta. Autograph. <laughs> truly, truly the last person on earth that I would ever think would shoot somebody. All right. So we're going to pivot away from the, the fact that I'll probably you'll never quit smoking. and But I do appreciate Steph's support. <laughs> no, I've been supportive. It doesn't work. Reverse so, motivation. That's right. Yes, miss. Does not work. 
the reason I'm, we're going to call Steph Miss throughout the rest of the show is because in our Patreon show, we found out that she doesn't like to be called ma'am. And I agree. I don't want to be called sir. Sir. But you got to listen to the Patreon show to hear about That's it. That's right. And how do you become a Patreon member? You go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews and sign up at any level. And if you come in at the $25 level, and we'll read these later, by the way, uh, then you will be a producer. But anybody, you can pay a dollar a month and you'll have access to all the show. Because that's how cool we are. I mean, a dollar a month. Think about that. If you're a non-smoker, it can cost just a few dollars a month. For a dollar a month, you could support us. And you could also feed no one in the world for a dollar a month. No one in the world. They'd rather eat the dollar <laughs> because there's more nutrition in that than the food they would get for a dollar. You could so, get like one penny candy for 50 cents. Yeah, but there's no penny candy anymore. You're right. So it's 50 cents and then get 50 cents back. Like when I worked at this convenience store in college called the Time Saver, a bunch of kids would come in, like three or four kids, and each of them would get a piece of candy that's really cheap. And you had to sell it to them. And then they would give you the $1 um, food stamp. And then you had to give them change back. And then they'd go out, and then the mom would come in with all the change and buy cigarettes. And I supported that kind of scamming because I always thought there should be cigarette stamps for poor people so they didn't have to buy discount cigarettes which are worse than premium cigarettes for your health. And that's a public service announcement from Radio Labyrinth. Okay, now cue the music and that star thing. Let's just get some uh, candy cigarettes. Where am I going to go? I don't have a time machine. <laughs> I'm going to my crack the barrels, though. If I had a time machine, I'd go back to 1978 and buy cigarettes for 40 cents a pack. Now, they're what? 28, thir- no, they were 30 cents a pack in the late 70s. Because I, the first pack I ever bought was in 1979. And I went into this store with another kid after school and I bought a pack of cigarettes, Marlboro Reds for 50 cents. And nobody cared. Here you go, kid. I know like in 81, they were like 90 cents a pack, 95 cents a pack. Because I would go and get them for my mom and she would say, when they're a dollar, I'll quit. Yeah. When they're a dollar, oh five, I'll quit. When no. they're a dollar, 10, I'll quit. <laughs> yeah. When did she quit? When she had a um, an aneurysm, all about, right, about five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody needs motivation. <laughs> there you go, Tim. That's the motivation. Yeah. Believe me, every headache I have now, I'm like, fuck. Because we're at that age, I don't want to talk about it. All right. So Jeff and I went to an ATL Comic Con. Steph and I went to that together last year. And who did we meet last year? I went there specifically to see who did I? Uh, Jamie Farr, Loretta Swit were there, and. I forget, though. We met a couple people, didn't we, Steph? Did you yeah, meet him? Yeah, Eddie Munster. Oh, Eddie Munster. That's right. That's right. Eddie Munster. And, um... Butch somebody, Patrick. Oh, no. What's his face from The Wire? Didn't you go over and talk yeah, to him? Seth Gillum. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. right. And then his boyfriend showed up, and he wouldn't care, and he wouldn't sign it. He was... Remember that guy showed up, his friend, and he's, like, ignored the crowd for... Fun. Yeah, from the show, and then he was just... Everybody was dead to him. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is my buddy that I know from the show. We were the standing dead. Yes. Yeah. And we'll talk about some other things, though. But Jeff and I go to this Comic-Con, and Jeff told me about it. Jeff, you always get get the hookup for these things. You told me about it a month ago. And I said, can I... I saw Alec Baldwin was going to be there. And I replied through text, will he sign my prop gun? Jeff didn't like that. (laughs) Got mad. And I get it. I understand. We're all fans of Alec Baldwin. (laughs) I'm a fan of Alec Baldwin. I like Alec Baldwin. I think... I don't care about his politics. I was thinking about it the other day that he used to like care or get mad. Uh, but he's not one of those guys. He's just always been a great actor. And and he, funny. So and, yeah, funny. Very funny on Saturday Night Live doing Trump or, or you know, 30 Rock. The, canteen know, Boy. Yeah. Canteen Boy, Sweaty Balls. Uh, his great lines from all of his films uh, going all the way back to Beetlejuice. So I didn't expect a guy. I thought that he might be on a level of actor that wouldn't be at an event like that, like at a con. And I'm not knocking people who go do them because most of the time, the people that do them don't need the money, really. They're going there for the fans. And if you're going to be going there for the fans, you know, I don't begrudge them for making $50, $60 for an autograph. But Alec Baldwin was charging $120 for an autograph. And he was charging $100 for a selfie. And he did combine it. You got a discount. If you got a selfie and an autograph, it was only 200 And there were tons of celebrities at this event. And his line, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, there weren't a lot of people in it, were there? 
Brian, I didn't see how his, how long his line was really. No, you could walk. I could have walked up at any time. I could have walked up and gotten his autograph and it wouldn't have taken more than five minutes. And as I looked at his little, um, maybe I'll send you pictures of this, Dustin. You can put them in, in the video. The, they had a menu that if you wanted to quote from any of his movies, it was 40 bucks. So if for him to write, dear Tim, put that coffee down, it would have been 60 bucks. How much would it have been to get him to do the entire monologue? A lot. <laughs> coffee is I mean, for closing. Where it, like he treats me like I'm Jack Lemon. Like I get to be Jack Lemon and he's just dressing me down. God damn, that would be expensive. How about the time he called his daughter? And he's in his underwear. And no. he's 30. And he's yeah, 35 rude. again. Yeah. Rude. Right? <laughs> Tim is a rude, thoughtless little piggy. Yeah, you're a rude, thoughtless little piggy. And your mother, the whole thing. Just can you write that whole thing out? No, I would have him do, I would have him reenact that scene that he did with uh, Tracy Morgan on 30 Rock when he pretended to be Tracy's father and he did mm -hmm. all of the inflections. Yep. Oh my God. Do you think he was just trying to price out crazy people? Probably. Why'd you kill that woman? Yeah. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> I don't think you've done money it. For, he probably needs the money for his legal defense. I think you're right. But I don't think you've done it, Alec Baldwin. I don't think you'd ever heard a fly. Even though you beat up photographers all through the years. They should just civil suit him and be done with it. Just get the money out of him for what he did. He was negligent. He didn't check the gun. He should have blah, blah, blah. He's an actor. He is not this the This is not malice murder. Get out of yeah. here. Right. I don't think he should do jail time. And I think that if he can get out of it by, because he's a producer on the film, giving them money, I understand. I mean, granted, they lost a family member and you feel terrible for them. But he didn't intentionally kill anybody. And how many times that people use prop guns in a movie where somebody didn't get shot? Like 99.9% .9 of the times they use prop guns unless you're John Eric Hexum. And the fact that the chick who did the check-in, that was like her first movie. Yeah, I know. The but the first can't one she's after, ever been the head of. can't go after her. Because, well, well, I get it. They're not going to go after her. It's his fault. But anyway, if there's going to be Baldwins at a Comic-Con, I, I would think there'd be Billy or Steven and Adam, even though he's not related. I've met Adam. <laughs> but it's on my, my, my bodyguard DVD. Yeah. Did he say anything about that movie? No. He he he, was, he liked the fact that I had it though. He, he signed it twice. I was just listening to a podcast where they were talking about uh, Adam Baldwin, and uh, but moreover, they were talking about Chris Makepeace. What the hell was it? I listen to so many podcasts now; they all bleed together. Um, he pays the guy to protect him. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, my bodyguard. Yeah, my bodyguard. Yeah. yeah, but they were talking about Chris Makepeace on Dudesy because they had to read. They did a rewatch of that Tom Hanks dragon movie that oh, it mazes and monsters. Mazes yeah. and monsters. Yeah. Now that's why we call it Radio Labyrinth because we go down rabbit holes and put things and go around. And that is why we call it Radio Labyrinth. Really, we haven't we don't do that a lot. But yeah. Anyway, um, I went so, to the psych yeah. panel. Jeff went to the psych panel, and you met. Uh, tell tell everybody who you got to meet, and then I'll tell who Tim, I met. Tim Momenson. Yeah, from that, and also Deadwood, which I didn't recognize him because he has all that long hair and a beard on yeah. psych. And who else did you get? You got uh, Garrett Dillahunt, who I, I got him again to sign my D Deadwood DVD. What did you have him sign before? Just a picture? No, he signed it before. So there's two signatures from him on there now. Oh, because he played two different characters. Yeah. That makes sense. Is that why you did it? Yep. That's smart. How many people have signed that box? Mm, like five now, I think. Ah, you got W. Earl Brown, obviously. Yeah. Who else? Do you see they're doing the Deadwood thing in, in Deadwood? When no. Mr. Wu and W. Earl Brown are going to be there. Cocksucker. Yeah. <clears throat> what are they doing? I don't know. Some kind of live show. Really? What, like a yeah. table read? I don't know what they're going to do. Wow. It's called Mr. Wu's Deadwood Days. That sounds like fun. You should yeah. go. Yeah, you're going to go to fucking South Dakota. Why not? You don't like Cursey Gnome? I don't like flying. Oh. You don't like flying? No. No. You're a flyer, are you? That's right. You took a bus when you lived down in the Caribbean. No, that was like the last time I flew, though. Is that right? That's why you fly to Nebraska or drive to Nebraska, right? Because that's a yeah. long drive. Plus, you drive through a bunch of legal weed states, so that doesn't hurt. Not that you smoke weed. It's just that you like to support states like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, Jeff. I hate flying. I don't like flying either. It's a fucking hassle. Everybody sucks. TSA grabs your dick in the bathroom. The uh, other celebrity that I, I 
uh, wanted to meet and get an autograph from was also too expensive, but I'll cut him some slack because for the last 20 years, he's been on the star whacker list and he made it. So he lived long enough and now he doesn't talk about that anymore. And he shaved. Uh, he didn't shave. He was fucking huge beard. He didn't have a huge beard. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. I have a picture of him. He didn't have a huge beard. I thought he did. Uh-uh. And all the pictures from last fall when he was doing the, the, the tour with Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo for the Christmas vacation panels and stuff, he didn't have a beard. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah it was the guy sitting next to him had the beard. Might have been. Very lonely uh, Henry Thomas. No one in line for him. Yeah. Really? Even after, even after fucking Haunting of Hill House and all that shit. Weird. Nope. Yeah, it was very weird to see. But he would, I, someone told me there, some guy just came up to me and started talking to me. You know, I'm I'm always that guy that people, hey, okay. He's talking and just kept talking and talking. He's, yeah, I feel bad for him, but he was just here for Days of the Dead. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. How about that Alec Baldwin, man? He don't need the money. Oh, maybe. And then he goes, you were here last year. Uh, yeah, Jamie Farr and Loretta Swit were here from MASH. She's old as shit. But yeah, man, she's like 90 or something. She didn't look good. I guess she's 90. I wasn't combative with him because I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to get stabbed. Then um, there, there were tons of people there, though. And Anthony she Dan looks better than the original Hot Lips. Yeah, well, she passed away. So. <laughs> so She's gold lips now. Yeah. <laughs> Gray lips. <laughs> uh, the person that I met was Mary McDonald from Battlestar Galactica. and She's been on a ton of shit, but I don't really know most of it. Oh, you talking Kicking Bird? Yeah. Bird. Yeah, her name was Stands with a Fist. Her husband was Kicking Bird. And I uh, hated I her in that movie. I hated her so much. Why? Because you thought that it was weird that the the only white guy <laughs> finds the only white woman. And that's how he... Like, Kevin Codger's like, I'll do it, but only if there's a white chick for me to bang. I'm not banging a Native American. Tatanka. 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 That's Tatanka. I love that movie, but yeah, that character was off-putting. Although I like her a lot, so I'm not going to trash it. And it's one of my my uh, stepmother's favorite movies. So I went up to her. There was I was I waited specifically for her, and then the line formed behind me for her to come back from wherever she was. And I went up to her and said, "My name's Tim." He was very nice. She has big smile, and uh, I said, uh, "Yeah, I'm gonna you know show the image to the picture to my gram to my stepmother she's a big fan of dances with wolves and she goes well tell her i said hello and it was very nice she's very soft-spoken and smiling and she said this is this is how the how you should do it by the way actors watching radio labyrinth all none of you the way you do it is you engage the person in line she goes so what do you do for a living i said i'm on the radio she goes oh wow what do you do and i said well i tell jokes and i do voices and uh she goes Oh, who do you do? I mean, she just kept asking the questions. I didn't go up and go, hey, I do Trump. You should and, hit her with the, so say we all. Well, I, I wasn't thinking. I was off put because I wasn't, I'm not used to that kind of interaction with a celebrity. Well, did you do any voices for Yeah. Me? I said, uh, well, the reason we had to support the Cylons is because, uh, <laughs> well, look, look, I mean, we blew up Caprica. We blew up all the planets, all 12 planets, right? We had to get in there and do that. And then we blew up Capricorn. I mean, no, no, Scorpion. I mean, Scorpion, Scorpio, who cares? And she really was laughing. <laughs> and she, she said, who else do you do? And just for some fucking reason, I said, James Mason. She goes, oh, I want to hear that. And I said, have you ever seen the movie? Salem's Lot with the late David Soro. Rest in peace, David So I need to go move an ashtray. And she <laughs> laughed. And she uh, signed the autograph. So that, to me, was worth the interaction. Yeah, well, yeah. She, you're memorable. She'll definitely remember you. Yep. And then I tagged her in a photo of the autograph thanking her. I didn't get a like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you stalked her then. Then it turned stalky. No. You were great in uh, Independence Day. Here's a picture of your cat. <laughs> How come you didn't? Never mind. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's that. So, uh, yeah, that's our little recap of uh, Comic Con. Yeah, we were going to, we talked about the Super Bowl commercials in the Patreon show. So, if you want to hear that, you can donate whatever. But uh, because I felt like it was, it's almost a week out from the Super Bowl. So, where everybody else has already done it. Well, at least it was a fairly decent game, except for like the last quarter. Yeah, it was. Except for the ending wasn't decent. Yeah. I didn't care either way. I'm glad Taylor Swift's boyfriend won the Usher concert, though. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) 
new trailers and trends with Steph. We've su- we've sunk further and further into our world of black and white, where nothing can be nuanced yet again. Yes. As the uh, left is mad at John Stewart for not just saying that Joe Biden is the second coming of anything, mm-hmm. and he gave him was- just as much. I thought it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> and I, I'm f- as far left as, as anybody on the show. So as you should be, Jeff, as it is normal to be able to laugh at both things, right. it yeah. should be able to you should be able to see the truth. And he's not wrong about anything that he said. Thank you. You no. vote for him if you want to. But you can't sit there and be in denial and be like, that's not true. That's bull crap. Get no. out of here. The I saw the story and and I don't know if it's manufactured. You know what I mean? Because a lot of things are clickbait. We know that. We know a lot of things are clickbait. I mean, his show had nine hundred thousand viewers. That is bad. Good for the demo, probably the target audience they want, but they're not going to get young people. And here's a here's a little secret to all television, all people who still cling to this idea that people are watching television eventually and sadly i will add the boomers will no longer be around then who becomes the boomers gen x guess what we don't fucking care either and then behind us none of those people are watching tv let alone tv news or any kind of snarky political commentary from the left so uh when those people are gone there there's no one watching shows like that and it sucks because he had more viewers than anyone ever to host that show, The Daily Show. And he's only doing it once a week and he's only doing it until the election. And I understand it. So what do they do to gin up? Oh, hey, in case you forgot or, hey, you're young, young people don't like him. Tune in and find out or whatever. Maybe I'm wrong. You're probably uh, right. But uh, he's John Stewart. You, you know what you're going to get with John Stewart. John Stewart never fluffed anyone up. If you watch The Daily Show after he left, all it did was fluff people up. You know how he votes. You know how he believes. But you can watch John Stewart and laugh because he's funny. He's always been funny. He's a good no, stand comedian. He go ahead. I'm sorry. And well, and just the simple fact that if you know anything about him, you know how hard he has fought for all of those nine eleven vets. Yes. To get their, I mean, he's been doing that for years. And not doing it for not doing it because he wants to boot <laughs> himself. He does it because he's passionate about. It. And they also forget. Just to have a sense of humor about stuff. I actually applaud SNL for having old girl on there, just even there Haley. briefly. Yeah, because totally not their demo, totally no. not their whatever, but represent both sides. I mean, everybody, if if somebody's willing to get up there and take make fun of themselves, put them up there. Right. But let me tell you this. If she became the nominee for the GOP, she'd immediately become Lady Hitler. Given that I mean, she probably of- would. But if she had a good enough sense of humor to come on there and be Lady Hitler on SNL. Do you know who got the 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 candidate that got the most shit in the 2000s from Saturday Night Live was Sarah Palin when she was the vice presidential candidate for John McCain. And they had um, Tina Fey do her. But you know what Tina Fey didn't do? She didn't act like she hated her. She made her look goofy. And then Sarah Palin actually got into it and came on the show and laughed along with her. You know what I mean? That used to be the norm. Right. Most... How about when, oh, sorry to step on you, but do you remember when uh, after the election in 96, Norm MacDonald showed up dressed as uh, Bob Dole and, and Lauren Michaels? Well, you know, he lost, so you, you can't. Uh, I ain't dressed like Bob Dole anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and then Bob Dole walks on. He goes, don't you worry about Bob Dole. Bob Dole is going to be fine. But that's to your point. I mean, that's how things used to be. And now it's just craziness for anybody out there who would get mad that John Stewart would just state the obvious that this Biden is a decrepit old piece of shit. <laughs> I saw Steve Byrne at the punchline a couple of weeks ago. And my favorite joke of the whole night was, did you see that last Biden press conference? It was really good. Open casket. That's a great joke. <laughs> <laughs> and then that report that came out, we're not going to go deep into it at all, but the report that came out, they hired the guy, a special counselor or whatever they call him, a special special counsel to go find out all this stuff and investigate Biden and his boxes of shit that he kept in his in his uh, garage. All these presidents take their shit and then forget to give it back. Um, it's he said in the in the thing that, uh, well, this guy, he obviously could face charges, but we're not going to charge him because a jury would find him too sympathetic to um, prosecute. 
fine. But then the story became, instead of what was in it, or the fact that he did it, just like Trump did, that uh, the story became, they were mean. He was mean and talking bad about I, Anyone with eyes and ears who's paid any attention has watched him slowly decline over the last four years. And here we are, we're stuck with those two and then a guy who just spends all of his money surfing and taking off his shirt on Instagram. That's okay, because I have a very good body. I no, know but I, 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 like much of the country, watched True Detective. Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, this season has a higher viewer. This last episode is higher than the first season, which is crazy. Every episode has gone up in viewership, right? Yeah, yeah. something like that. And now it's surpassed the original season. And there's speculation that Woody and, uh, well, that they'll show up. Woody and I don't think that'll happen, but why would they show up in Alaska? Well, spoiler alert, I wasn't expecting old Hawks to eat it. Yeah, that was yeah. bad. That fucked me up. Yeah, I, I was not expecting out. it at all. Yeah, by the way, spoiler alert. <laughs> I said um, it. I said it. I know but you it, did. I, I think that's pretty six cool, episodes. though. It's only six episodes. Hopefully, the next, it'll be 90 minutes or something, I hope. Were the, I, other one, the other ones were eight episodes, weren't they? Yeah. Isn't next the the final? Yeah. 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 just seems weird to me that it's only six episodes. What do you think is going to be in that cave? People. I don't know. I don't think there's anything supernatural going on. Do you? I, <clears throat> I like the theory that it's Navarro's... Um, split personality and she's the killer oh i haven't heard that theory yeah that's it's uh that each time that it's happened she splits she 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 doesn't she blacks out and doesn't remember what she's doing mm -hmm. um but as far as the kill all those people from the the research facility yeah that that's the the whole that was a weather event yes that's right and yeah. we will speak no more of it if you've looked at the trailer for the next one um, mm -hmm. yeah, they definitely are, are going back into the, the station on their own mm -hmm. and, and fa found a way into the cave, um, through the top. So can I, can I just add something? Sure. If there's something going on in ice caves, yeah, we're, we're just going to close the investigation. If I'm the chief, I'm not going <laughs> to fucking ice cave. No, thanks. You go in there and it's, a, it's like a big arcade with pinball machines and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a big man cave. <laughs> if you think you could just go on and live your life after you've seen a naked Jenga pile of men like that, and you know they didn't just get that way. It wasn't a weather event that put them in a big naked ball like that with those looks of horror on their face. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah, the, the only time an avalanche has ever occurred on a flat surface. Sideways <laughs> avalanche. <laughs> Well, we'll talk lie. about it. We'll talk about the... Uh, who, who sent John Hawks to kill that guy? The mine. Do Doctor Who? Oh. The chick the that runs the mine. Yeah, yeah the mine lady. Yeah. Doctor Who is just a pawn. Yeah. They're all pawns. Yeah, Danvers was banging her old man, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be jealous, just. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm jealous. I mean, if you're in a town that's dark for like 30 days out of the year and Jodie Foster is all you got to go after, yeah. get what you can get. She doesn't seem very generous either. She seems like she'd be very selfish. <laughs> yeah. well, she don't like the Beatles either. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, we talked about <laughs> we talked about ads in the uh, Patreon show, but I guess Uber Eats, they had that commercial. It's kind of a funny commercial. It was. Did you see the original version? No, I. Well, I think I did, but I didn't remember about him eating the peanut butter. I mean, given Jennifer Aniston's facial surgery, it's like she's allergic to peanuts and ate some peanut butter. It didn't look like Jennifer Aniston anymore. She's got those lips. Yeah, she did something. Oh, hi. I'm Jennifer Aniston. She's looking a lot like Lionel Richie. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the cheeks for that, but you're right. What is going on, though, with these allergens lobbyists? How do they well, have so much power to where they can be like, Oh, God, you're making peanut uh, allergy people have a bad day, so you got to pull this. I mean, that's the whole country now. I mean, it, something bothers me. I, mean, I get it. Peanuts are deadly to people with allergy. Anything that's, that causes an allergy could be potentially deadly. 
Well, let's find out why the reason why people are starting to be allergic to peanuts. When I was a kid, nobody was allergic to peanuts. It's because of Pfizer. Let's say this. How about in a normal world, in a world that we would probably be happy to be in, to where you could say the rest of us, you know, in their generation have made the sacrifice of not being able to bring a freaking peanut butter and jelly sandwich to school my entire right. life. We're adults now. You can handle this commercial. Yeah. 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 We used to get peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in lunch. I mean, you know that, right? They can't even have peanut butter in the building. No. Yeah. You cannot. I work with a guy who's allergic to apples, but that we were allowed to joke about apple. <laughs> so the the original scene in that ad was they're talking about Uber Eats and stuff. And this guy has his face is all red and puffy. And he goes, you mean there's peanuts and peanut butter? It was a funny little throwaway thing. And it was a visually funny a gag. And then somebody got their you know panties in a wad and they they edited it. And it wasn't as funny. So that's what happens. Well, now these people are not allergic to peanuts anymore. No. Nope. Because they pulled that out of the commercial. Thank you. <laughs> Thank so, you. So uh, our, our guy, Killer Mike, he was on The View. And you know how they like to do on there. They try to flip the tables on you and yeah, make you defend yourself. Yeah. So, they're yeah, back they, on tours. Yeah. One of the, one of the hosts uh, kind of baited Sun- him a little bit. and. Honey? Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Honey Holston. Did they escorted him out in handcuffs? Yeah. He roughed her up afterwards. She was very, she was overzealous. She was. But uh, she just tried to state some facts about, or what she called facts about his political leanings and support and whatnot. And he had to let her know that she was inaccurate. He checked out a Bernie bro. She, he was not going to be lied on. No, right there. I'm going to be lied on. I like that guy, man. I respect him. I respect him. I work with a guy that knows him, <laughs> which I think is cool. So um, there's a chance that, Steph, you can come down here with me on a Saturday and we'll hang out uh, at a um, Q&A and you can mm-hmm. meet him. I, would, I wouldn't even I don't know do that, it myself. I don't know that we can get an interview, but. Uh, I don't care. Get I, would be, I would be totally fine with that. Yeah. I love him because, you know, and I've. I've you know, just being a fan of his music, but, you know, seeing him on Bill Maher over the years, seeing him in all these different places, he's so intelligent and mm-hmm. he's very much like pro his issues and whatever. But he also has like a globalist type of, you know, he thinks about what other people are. He's a globalist. Too. He's yeah. a globalist. I mean, he works for the WEF and, uh, and Klaus von Bülow or whatever his name is. I mean, in the sense that he thinks of everybody, not just himself or what he wants. Like if whatever he wants kind of hinges on getting along with other people and understanding what they want and trying to, like, you know, make ends that way. So that's what I think is very cool about it. Well, I just think the other guy from Run the Jewels. <laughs> well, I'd love to meet you, too. EIP. No, I mean, you're right. He's a guy that just speaks his mind. You know where he stands, but he's not afraid to say, hey, look, what did he say? What was the line? He goes, I'm going to uh, I'm going to eat dinner with the king because he's the king. That's what I'm going to eat dinner with. That's right. Right. Well, hopefully we'll get to meet him. Oh, yeah. dude, that would be like the best ever. Totally the best ever. Well, let me um, ask Shelly because Shelly, uh, I just talked to Mike and uh, yeah, he, he's busy through February, but I think in March we'll be able to set it up. I just so, think I would die. I would die. Uh, <laughs> won't die. <laughs> that would be so You're, awesome. Ma'am, you are not a smoker. White Lotus season three is uh, beginning to film in Thailand. No Jennifer Coolidge in this one. Still, probably not. Probably not, well, but dead, that right? good. yeah, but he may do her in a flashback, which would be great. Uh-huh, that'd be good. Eh? <laughs> Supposedly, the only um, old, the from the old ones is uh, Natasha Rothwell, mm-hmm. who was the spa manager in the first one, and she used to be on Insecure. I oh god, she's so funny on Insecure. But um, oh good, anyway. it's coming back. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they haven't said what's going on. Only that this might be more of a. I think they said religion and spiritual type. He's dipped, yeah, he's dipped into a couple of other different topics. But, mm-hmm. uh, and everybody that was in the show is dying to come back. So, no well, good. They're Walter Goggins, too. Yeah. Did you see that? That's definitely written by AI. 
Is this his yeah. name not Walton Goggins? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's in that. He's going to be in it. Yeah. Yeah, he's in the new season. Maybe he'll be Baby Billy in it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> That's where they'll go. Oh, my God. That would be the laugh that kills me. I yeah. think if he rolled up on White Lotus's Baby Billy. Have, have you heard Kanye's new album? I did listen to it. I was underwhelmed. Yeah, I was. Uh, you know, I I didn't hate it. I thought it was all right. There was I didn't a lot. Hate of, it, but it was pretty good. Like, I'm not going to listen to it again, probably. No, I never. I haven't finished it, but I liked it better than I liked Donda. It, yeah, it's just it's never going to do. It's never going to be what it was. It's just not no, gonna, he's not going to go back and do fun, catchy, interesting. No, stuff. I mean what he's doing now is like derivative of other of stuff that he's done or stuff that he's heard, and it's just it's not as good. I mean, he still has punchy lyrics. I'll give him that. There was. A few times I was like, ooh. But he stole lyrics. Who did he steal from besides Ozzy? Uh, well, he didn't steal from Ozzy. He just played Ozzy's a sample or like something that he did at um, But he and asked he, Ozzy, and they said, no. oh, you, you're a bloody anti Semite. You can't use my fucking music. I'm oh, fucking, uh, no. And Kanye with your platinum teeth for you, fucker, uh, no. Well, they asked Ozzy to, if they could use the track for the album, and he said no. He didn't do that. What he no, did he was he, it, yeah. he played it at the listening party. If you use a live version, they can't they can't get you for copyright. And so oh. that was his step around. It, but it's still a slap in the face to Ozzy and for after asking and t- being told no to just do I it anyway. Slap Ozzy. Well, I mean, that, yeah. and that's what he did to Donna Summer with uh, her song that I Feel Love. They He straight up asked for permission. They told him no, and they did it anyway. And I, the song isn't even that great. It's like, oh, do you, you had to have this sample? No, really? I, it's a just whatever. Listen the, just listen to the original song, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, he's, but he's still going, man. Kanye's a survivor. He's, he's so going to make it. Way. Yes, he <laughs> is. Well, you know, thank you, Steph. You know who's not going to make it? Us. You know who is? The Zuckerberg people who are buying doomsday bunkers. We'll talk about that some other time. But yeah, they, they know something's coming. Just, just deal with it. The guy that owns Facebook, where your uncle posts shit about Trump and then you get mad at him and you block him and then you run into him a month or two later and he's like, why'd you block me? Because you're Trump support. Oh, fuck you. And then you get in a big family fight. That's because of Zuckerberg. It's not because of Trump. It's because of Zuckerberg. He gave you the platform where you get in a fight with your uncle and you don't talk anymore. They are all building doomsday bunkers and they are going to live. Your uncle's building a doomsday bunker? Not my uncle. Mark Zuckerberg is building. Oh, uh, and by the way, I did that wasn't bio, biographical. I have never gotten a political <laughs> fight with anybody in my family. Uh, but the uh, the the Zuckerberg types are building these things in New Zealand. They're been, and somebody's saying it's fulfilling Bible prophecy. What's going to happen is they're going to build these. Somebody who el- who lived but th- you know doesn't have money or food or their own bunker is going to find them and cut their heads off and eat their bodies. That's what's going to happen, Mark Zuckerberg. So you better turn into the builder bot. They're they're moving into those abandoned hobbit hobbit holes that they have left in New Zealand. Builder bot. Yes, I'm Mark Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm not. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Steph. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know the the bunker though. It's two hundred sixty-seven million dollars. Pocket change for, him. for that guy. Yeah. I made a dating thing so I could get laid, and now I'm a billionaire, and I work for the CIA, and they track everybody. Do you think his wife is a Megan? One of the doll. That's what I always thought. You're something, though. Jeff Bezos divorced his wife who helped him build Amazon. He's an attractive lady. He married a blow up doll. <laughs> you know why these rich guys? I'm going to divorce this woman who helped me build my empire. She can have half of my money. Uh, and that was a lot of money. And then I'm going to get this woman who uh, has fake everything. But hey, rich people are nuts. Well, he looks like a flaccid dong. So <laughs> he does. He looks like a circumcised flaccid. Penis. Allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to get sued by these billionaires. Well, Bill- billionaires don't sue. They just crush. It'd be you. awesome if we got sued by billionaires. <laughs> you realize that, right? <laughs> yeah. Just, just on principle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark Cuban. <laughs> We're just go fund the <laughs> shit out of this. I get a text from somebody a second ago and says, the fast car song sucks. There, I said it. He's talking about the remake, right? Yeah. I want to write back, the original sucked too, but I would be lying because I like both of them. (laughs) But I like the original better. All right. Thank you, Steph, for the story. (laughs) 
The following advertisement contains celebrity impersonations and is not an endorsement. Radio Labyrinth is brought to you by Atlanta Pizza and Gyro. I think it's pronounced Gyro, Michael. Gyro. Whatever. Atlanta Pizza and Gyro is ready for the winter season with over 40 beers in cans and bottles and 16 beers on tap with 12 of those being local Georgia and Southeast craft beers. Their current featured selection is Jekyll Brewing's Cooter Brown Ale. This brown ale is the perfect wintertime brew with its silky smooth body, sweet caramel and chocolate aroma, and a slight refreshingly bitter finish. They once again would like to thank all the radios and fans for listening to this podcast. Stop by the restaurant and mention you heard about them on Radio Labyrinth for a free dessert. By the way, their food truck is on hiatus until late February due to winter weather, but there are always exceptions. And if you want to reserve a specific date, please contact Mike Hall at 770-483-6228. And don't forget, they're open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and noon to 9 p.m. on Saturday. They're closed on Sundays. That's nice. There's a legend behind Cooter Brown Ale. Cooter Brown supposedly lived on the line which divided the North and South during the American Civil War, making him eligible for military draft by either side. He had family on both sides of the line, so he did not want to fight in the war. He decided to get drunk and stay drunk for the duration of the war so that he would be seen as useless for military purposes and would not be drafted. Ever since, Colloquial and proverbial ratings of drunkenness have been benchmarked against the legendary drinker as drunk as Cooter Brown or drunker than Cooter Brown. Yeah, uh, we've all been there, boy. Do you have commercial or residential construction printing needs? Sure, we all do. Well, what are you waiting for? Contact LDI Reaper Printing of Athens, in Athens, Georgia. Since 2005, with fast turnaround and affordable prices, call 706 716-9366 316-9366 or email them at athens at ldiline.com Guys, are you reading the online comments? Gotta read some of these comments. I'm loving your guys' comments. You're reading your own comments? Yeah, they're really good. I worked hard on them. The secret is, don't read the comment cards. I came here to talk to someone about this, get some perspective. Turns out I can just read the fucking YouTube comments. So YouTube comments, you can watch our show on YouTube. Obviously, hopefully you are doing so because Dustin kicks ass at making this YouTube show every single week. And uh, the shorts, good job getting it. Unless you paid for all those likes or views, it was nice to see one of our videos getting a lot of likes and interaction and views. Because like people get millions of views on their shorts. I see ours goes over a thousand. I get a boner. Yeah, (laughs) better than Ciala. I'm excited about it. Come on. What do you want from me? Jack G9654 wrote, love the new intro. It has a no FX feel to it. Keep up the good work, Dustin. Oh, thanks, Jack. Appreciate That'd it. Be a, that's a high compliment. Yeah. And uh, Jams9965 said, thank you. Killer Mike is one of the most underrated persons in the game. Uh, at 2 abstract 43 says, catch a beat running like Randy Moss. Uh, at Sad Fox Giver said, these people are sucker free. Now that one perpe- perplexed me, but we found out, Steph, step, that means we're all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to check. I don't know. Yeah, sucker free. We're sucker free. I don't speak sucker. Zuckerberg free too. Uh, at Tim Name 6634 said, glitter, glisten, gloss, floss. What does that mean? Is that some secret code? I don't know. It might be a line from a song. I would Yeah, imagine. I think it is. But those co- comments are all on our um, on our short about uh, Killer Mike and Steph's history lesson because I didn't know a lot about him and now I know a lot more. So here is Wally Blanco with his latest video. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs on their third Super Bowl ring and fuck you to all the mega pricks who hated on Taylor Swift. People can't help who they love. Whether you're an extremely wealthy pop singer or a teacher who supplements your income by showing thousands of simps how deep you can take a dragon dildo, love, as they say, is love. Kudos to Joe Biden for kayfabing the shit out of America and commanding the NFL to give Kermit the quarterback another ring. My favorite fan duel prop bet was, which celebrity will be caught on camera flashing devil horns and summoning Satan to affect the outcome of the game? My favorite commercial was the one for the vibrating silicone ring that you wear around your balls. 
It's the best all-natural treatment for ED, and it has a little vibrating button that stimulates your prostate while massaging your taint. Not that I need that sort of thing, but Christ. Having Pope Francis do the ad was a stroke of genius, pun intended. I'm surprised Tim didn't buy an ad for Radio Labyrinth. Or better yet, fly out there and hijack all the other podcasts on Media Row. I'm sure Cam Newton would love a pickleball racket or an energy drink koozie. Imagine Tim and Steph bursting into Rich Eisen's show and Andrew's taking off his shirt like Burt Kreischer. Ah, good times. Dustin, what's up with the merch? Merch store still going. We got a, that sale of RLP123 at checkout. Use that and you'll get 10% off your whole order. So go ahead and get those in. Have we sold out all of our merch like Gagne? Yeah. His views. Or, 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 or. And snooze. Uh, last week was uh, Halo, Tokyo Vice, and Stupid Petrix. Tokyo uh, Voice? We can't do that. We'll get canceled. Tokyo Vice. Oh, somebody wrote it wrong. Oh, did I write it wrong? <laughs> yeah, that's why I said <laughs> we can't do Tokyo Voice and we'll get canceled. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Magloo, Mr. Magloo. <laughs> Stupid Petrix, I watched both of those. That's That's not bad. Yeah. The pets are the pets are fun. The show itself is kind of yeah, yeah. But the the actual pet tricks are 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 entertaining. And I watched Halo, the first Halo two Halos. Good, by the way, no Halo is not good. I was hoping it would be better in season two, and it's yeah, not. It's the same shit. Yep. Yeah. I got to get Tokyo Voice, but it's going to be a, a while before I can get to it. Yeah. I like that show so much. The first season. Yeah, season one was really good. Hmm. Uh, Resident Alien comes back for season three this week. Good. Is this cool. the final season? I don't know. I haven't heard if it's the final season or not. I mean, you got to think that they pretty much told the story, but it's a great show. It's very funny. They went past telling the story last season. Yeah. <laughs> so this ought to be interesting. Uh, Far North. This is on uh, Sunday's channel on AMC Plus. This is that show that. Oh, yeah. Mako Pahotu, Pahotu was talking about when we had him on last. Yeah, he was filming. That he was filming. Yeah. Mm. Looks really good. What's it about? Like drugs and stuff. Yeah, running okay. them on the beach on the north side of the island. They would use that strip for like cars. They'd use it like they used to do moonshining in the U.S. Oh, so cool. They had these beach cruising things. He said he had to learn all that stunt driving and everything. So yeah. that ought to be pretty cool. And they had Bob, Boba Fett's in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, um, that's a probable views for me. Yeah, it's a views for me. Yeah, I'll be it. And then uh, Life and Beth comes back. Anybody watch that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I like. I really liked the first season. Yeah, I really liked it too. And it's been like th two or three years since it was on. But it's back now for season two. I'll and definitely I'll... give that a views. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jeff. All right, let's do our staff picks. Who wants to start? Dusted and Steph don't have anything listed here. No, I like that. it's on mine. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I'll, do, I'll do mine first. Oh, I guess um, I printed it too soon. Uh, the, there's a podcast called uh, 10 Percent Happier. Have you guys seen that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the guy that does it, he he does it in the style. I guess every inter uh, celebrity he interviews, it goes into like their their troubles with anxiety and um, you know, personal issues that they have, emotions about you know being in public or being in in a celebrity. And this episode uh, has Bill Hader, and he talks about uh, his anxiety through making uh, all of Barry and, and all the panic attacks and stuff he would have. But he also talks about having imposter syndrome growing up, mm -hmm. which I, I myself uh, used to have a really bad problem with. Like if you were talking... A real Dustin Lawler wouldn't say that. Well, if, yeah. you, were if you were talking to um, a British person... <laughs> And then uh -huh. you just jump into a British accent without thinking. About oh, it. I'm like that. Yes. I was going to say, people that do voices are are like that. And and he talks about it, which is kind of interesting. Does he bring up the um, the time Jeff Bridges told him about how to beat anxiety? He talks about Jeff Bridges. Yeah. That's, that, that's your buddy. <laughs> you learn that's from he, it. Yeah. That's what, does he say that on the show? Because yeah. I've heard yeah, him say that before. Ah, cool. So that's your that's your that's um, my staff pick, yeah. Staff. Oh, mine is the uh, season five of the Tournament of Champions. Now you watch this, don't you, Jeff? 
Who who hosts this? Guy. Know, it's a guy uh, show. Guy Fieri. And it's all of the top, you know, they yeah. break up the whole East Coast, West Coast showdown between all these top chefs. But it's oh season five, and it's on this Sunday, February 18th on Food Network. I love the show. It's it's a fun show. Those shows are all fun. You yeah, this is a fun too. They're always fun to watch. And it's hard. Like the skill level is so high because all of the chefs that they have, they're, they're, they all have their own shows. They're all people that you know. They're big deals. So I wish Chef Reactions had his own show. Yeah, I guess that's good. He's yeah. fucking great. Yeah, they did this back in Italy. Fuck you. Ten ten would try. Yeah, ten of ten would try. <laughs> we talked about mine already. Daily Show, John Stewart every Monday until I mean, the election. He did a good job. You, you're yeah. not. You're not gonna. You're going to get what you expect with him and, and, you know, watch him. If you like him, don't get all caught up in the, well, he said something about Trump that I don't like. He said something about Biden. Okay. Fucking John Stewart. What else is we going to talk about? Yeah. Uh, mine, I have two, one real quick. Cause the other night I went on a midnight special YouTube rabbit hole. And I always forget that they did all the performances on there were live for the most part. And I watched the captain and Tennille doing love will keep us together and you just contrast it with today, pop music today, when everything is computers and, and filters and shit. And she's belting that song out. And at the end, they just do this jam. It all started, by the way, with watching. Do you guys ever watch Rick B Beto, Beto? No. He's a guy. He lives in Atlanta, but he's popular in, uh, with the, in the music world. And he's talking about the drum solo parts in Asia by Steely Dan. And that album, that album, Asia, is just all session musicians and then the two main guys of Steely Dan. And uh, the the drum solo, they recorded it, and then they had another guy come in, and they said, well, you can try it. And this guy just improvised the whole fucking thing. It's just amazing to find how songs and stuff are made, right? And uh, that's a great album. And then the other one is, uh, I, I started watching Dusty Slay, comedian Dusty Slay's uh, podcast with he with his wife and he's been doing the podcast circuit so I caught him on the podcast Steph introduced me to Are You Garbage and he told this story about how when he was a little kid they shot the movie um, Mississippi Burning in his hometown and his dad had a video camera so he took him down and went to the barber shop where the, you know that scene in Mississippi Burning where he yeah. uh, and so there's a scene where he opens the door and his dad goes Mr. Gene Hackman, can we come in? And Gene Hackman goes, I'll come out. And so just go watch it. Dustin, if you can link it here, go watch it. But uh, I wish I had known about it when I interviewed Dusty, because that's amazing to have. He was a little kid, a very small kid, maybe six years old. Hmm. Wow. And then on his most recent episode, he's talking to his wife about it. That means a lot to me. <laughs> I started working on an impression of him. I think I can get it. Dustin helped put it in my head that it's not all redneck. And it's, you know, it's, it's up here, you know, and I like things. You, you got to get the tempo going that way. He was on After Midnight this week. He, he won the game. Yeah, was he good? Yeah, it was funny. What did you? he win? So no, I, forget, I forget what he won. The prizes are crazy shit, like Tom Brady's boxer shorts and shit. I might be on a game show that Meredith Vieira hosts. No way. I might. Going to be doing an audition next Friday. Oh. What's it called, 25 or less? That's not how it works, Alan Jackson. Two inches or less, it's called. Well, I'd win that in a heartbeat. Then don't even hire any other <laughs> twenty five or less. It's twenty five words. It's it's like password, but you have five words and then you have to guess how many words you use to get your partner to figure. It's very convoluted. Um, <laughs> hey. Well it is. Uh, let's do some plugs and uh trambles. I hope you guys like that. If you haven't, check it out. It's just me rambling. Um, talking about things, trying to be current, not to be old man all the time, but I enjoy doing it. I just turn on the mic for the most part and just ramble. Um, let's see the podcast. I do a radio show on WSB radio in Atlanta, 955 FM, 750 AM or anywhere in the world on the app, the WSB radio app. And then you can always get the podcast after and when's uh, your Matt Walsh interview going to go on. That is today. If you're watching this, the day it comes out tonight at 7 p.m., I'll have Matt Walsh. Also, I have creative director of Dad's Garage, John Carr, who just did a stint with Second City and is back. He was here originally, and then he went up to Second City, and now he's back. And uh, I'll be speaking with him, too. Uh, next week, I have Joey Huffman. 
is an interesting cat. He has a book out, worked with all these different bands. Uh, and then in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have Adam Richman on from Man vs. No way. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll... Get him to come on here. We'll I'll talk about him. that e- eating the 80s show that he hosts. Love, love, love. Yeah. I will ask. Uh, hey, everybody, you can uh, go to Cameo and get a Cameo from me. I'll do any character you want. And maybe if I can't do it, I'll teach myself how to do it. Somebody wants me to do a voice that I've never done, so I'm going to have to learn how to do that. Uh, you can also find our friend Mark Schrankel. Thank again, you, uh, you. Thank again, thank you again, Mark, for making the very funny um, Stallone video. And uh, you can check him out on Cameo, Mark zero zero one. Also, isn't Shauna Ray on there as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can check her out too. Um, let's see. We want to thank our producers, the Radio Labyrinth producers. And if you want to become one or become any kind of level of Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. Uh, and uh, thank you to all of our producers at the $25 level Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jeff Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Kevin Jackson, Mike D, and Matt Carter. Uh, so thank you guys very much. Um, let's see what else. Please remember to rate us on audio platforms and, and leave a comment. And if we see it, we'll read it. And it used to be that I would read them in a character voice. So if you add that, I'll do that. But if you're watching us on YouTube, which is our preferred uh, platform, uh, remember to like and subscribe and, and leave a comment because we'll read it next week. And again, the same applies. If you remember the old days and you want me to do it in a voice, just make sure you put it in parentheses or something. Steph, what about Barkville? Mm. It says here online that it's an animal rescue place in Jasper, Georgia. That's correct. Oh, that's Sunday, that's March 3rd in Kennesaw, Caffeine and Octane. Caffeine and Octane is a huge show event featuring thousands of cars, classics to exotics, and it attracts tons of spectators. Stop by to meet their adorable, adoptable dog. Learn about fostering or make a donation to help save more dogs. Find them in the main lot in front of J.C. Penny. And then Saturday, March 23rd, Jordan's Way Live Fundraiser. Jordan's Way team will be helping to raise funds through Facebook Live and in person. Attendees and online viewers can watch participants engage in activities like pies to the face, ice bucket challenges, or lockdowns in dog crates. Steph, are you going to that? Oh, yeah, I'll definitely be there. Will you be locked in a dog crate? You know, <laughs> it's whatever people want. Can we throw pies at you? Uh-huh. Can we pour a ice water on you and throw pies at you while you're locked in the cage? <laughs> well, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know what? any of this was involved. You just now said it, and yeah. I'd already signed up to do it. So, fuck yeah, we're going. We're I going. Guess, I guess I'll have to have, do all that. But um, <laughs> yeah. So if you're a business too, if you want to sponsor us for the Jordan's Way, that's a thing. Yeah. So that's also something that you can find on the on the website. But please, you know. Foster, donate, barkvilledogrescue.org. And that'll be at Cloud9 Classics, 824 McFarland Parkway in Alpharetta, Georgia. Zip code 30004 slash USA. That's one of our volunteers, Roy Podlin. Such a cool dude. That's his shop. And he gets Mm -hmm. some of the coolest classic cars there. So nice. Vape shop? No. No, he does like. Cloud9. I thought it was a vape shop. No, it's it's literally. uh, Yeah. No, it's not a vape shop. Okay, but he does cool. a lot. Of, does a lot of Broncos and old Porsches and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, we'll check it out. All right. Thank you guys very much for listening. Thank you guys for uh, for being here for the show and uh, enjoy the rides, Dev. <laughs> well, keep it canine, and also don't forget to keep it keep it canine. Right on, Richard. <laughs>